Happy Tuesday, everyone. How are you all doing? This is your girl, Shan. Get up, get to moving. It's cold. <laughs> it's probably a warm up north than it is down here in Texas. I think it's like 21 degrees. It's cold. But anyway, I hope you all are all doing amazing, wonderful. You woke up in an amazing mindset. Now, <clears throat> I want to first up, thank you all for joining us last night on our radio show, Marriage Money is at the Kings, where we were continuing open marriage where we will continue in open marriage so thank you so much for those who are able to join listen in and we hope that you were blessed by the show but i'm gonna get into today's topic because i don't know why i have to get so frustrated <laughs> and maybe god put me in this place for a reason good morning dalisha but get so frustrated when it comes to the things that i see especially marriage so this morning's topic is stop playing games with your marriage stop playing games with your marriage do you know, and I want y'all to think about people that do this, this exact thing. Have you ever heard, I've heard, let me say it like this. I've heard women say, um, for example, oh yeah, if he loved me, girl, he better upgrade my ring. Hey, Leslie, he better upgrade my ring, girl, if he loved me and, and this, that, and the other. And I have heard husband and or wife play games with their marriage. Why do people do that? Why do you put a condition? Good morning, Akeisha. Why do you put a condition on your marriage? Why do people put a value, place a value on their marriage? Oh, if my husband really loved me, he gonna upgrade to a C-class Mercedes. What? Like, really? Hey, Cousin Kim, why are we playing games with our marriage? It irritates my soul. And then you got a person that loves you, that is married to you, that desire to, you know, give you the world the best way that they can because maybe they don't, they wasn't even taught. And I say this many of times, many of us was not taught how to be husband and wife, but to play childish games with our marriage will not help our marriage in the long run. Are you really allowing yourself to love your husband and wife the way that the word of God says? Or does it make you feel better when you place value? Good morning, Angelia. When you place value on your marriage, stop playing these childish games. And that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it straight up childish. I've seen this happen in so many facets. Oh yeah, I'm going to be straight up mad. I'm going to have an attitude if my husband don't do this for me. And of course, I'm speaking from a woman's perspective, but like I always say, this can happen both ways. Uh, uh, you may expect in your mind for your spouse to love you like your parents did. You may expect in your mind for your spouse to love you like your ex-wife or your ex-husband did. Or maybe, you know, your ex-wife or your ex-husband, oh Lord, help me Jesus. Hey Tasha, your ex-wife or your ex-husband may have loved you, but it was some pieces where they was missing but you expect your current wife or current husband to fill in those pieces like it is so crazy god did not put it to be that way i've even heard and i'm speaking because you know her lately i've been you know around women back in the day i used to kick it with number dudes i didn't do females i told y'all that um thank god for deliverance but anywho um what gets me too is that i hear women say this now you don't say it to your husband unless you're saying it with your mouth being nasty and Guys do this too. Husbands say this too. But more so women. Um, yeah, you, I don't, uh, I won't submit. This is a good one. I won't submit to my husband because my husband is not being a husband. Okay, well, what a husband look like to you? What does that mean? Have you ever even had this discussion with your husband? Your husband is trying to do everything. And this is for the individuals. Let me holler at somebody. This is for the individuals who you trying to do everything in your marriage, but it never seems like it's good enough. Uh, this is for the husband or the wife. That your spouse say, I'm trying to do everything I can. I'm trying to make you happy. I'm trying to be the best husband or wife that I can. And everything that I do is not good enough. If your spouse has ever told you this, then I need you to go ahead and check yourself. And ask yourself, are you playing games with your marriage? You wonder, see many of us wonder and probably have asked that question. Why does it seem like my marriage is not prospering beyond this? Why does it seem like it's not getting better? Because somebody up in there playing games with the marriage. I do not remember anywhere in the scriptures and I often say this and I'm not trying to say I know every scripture in the Bible by heart good morning Heather but I have not seen anywhere in the scriptures where it say thou shall play with with your marriage I haven't heard where it say thou shall play with your wife's feelings thou should treat your husband like dirt if they don't 
act the way that you want them to act. And see, that's why I'm even going on over here with the scripture thing. Now, this is what bothers me. And I'm about to be, med mm, maybe you're going to consider a meddling, but this is what bothers me. So why is it that we'll set up and say, uh, yeah, this and this and this, I believe, you know, you, okay, let me go to the scriptures. Y'all who know some scripture, a little bit of scripture, y'all stay with me. Huh? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm believing God for this. Good morning, Tasha. I'm believing God. I'm the head and not the tail. I live above and not be beneath. I'm believing God for ex great expectation. I'm believing God. Y'all done heard all this, especially if you live in the church or you grew up in the church. You believe in God for all these things, but you're not even submitting to the word of God when the word of God says, wives, submit unto your own husband. Okay, submit unto your own husband. Husband loves you, you love your wife as Christ loved the church. See, we don't want to do that part. Oh, girl, I ain't submitting to him. You crazy. He don't even act like a husband. But you wonder why your marriage is not prospering. Okay, so I know it may seem like that the kings are talking, you know, no more negativity. Good morning, Miss Biddle Sue. We're talking more negativity or whatever. No, we're not talking negativity when it comes to marriage. We're speaking truth. Somebody out here is playing games with your marriage, but yet and still, you, you want to apply some of the scriptures to your marriage, but you don't want to apply the scriptures to your marriage that really matters to your marriage. You set up here and have your spouse like keep doing things and keep doing things and keep doing things. And then you sit up here and wonder why it's not good enough. I need you to examine yourself and ask yourself a couple of questions. Where is this playing games birthed from? Where is that birth from in you? Not in your spouse, but in you. Why is it that you continue to hold your husband and your wife to these unrealistic expectations and expect them to meet them in order to prove their love to you? What is love to you? Because anybody who really love, especially their husband, their wife, would not be playing these childish games with them. What is love? Anybody who really love their husband and their wife would not make their husband and wife feel like they're not good enough. Now, who am I talking to on this morning? Good morning, Lisa. Who am I talking to on this morning? See, somebody is going to get mad all up in their spirit, all up in their feelings, and they're going to say, Shan, Queen, whatever you want to call me, you speaking foolishness, and it's time for me to click off. No. Hey, Keela. No, basically what that means is you need to examine yourself. If, if you as an individual, and like I said, I don't know who I'm talking to. If you as an individual wasn't grown enough and mature enough to get married, that is not your spouse's fault. That's your, sp your fault. You shouldn't have accepted that invitation, ladies, uh, that hand in marriage, just because you wanted to be able to walk down the aisle and look like a princess and husbands. You shouldn't have asked her if you wasn't mature enough to be in this marriage, okay? Okay. marriage is for mature folks it ain't for immature uh little acting kids who throw temper tantrums when i think about individuals who play games with their marriage it make me think about that two three year old child that's on the flow you know for your real school mamas the ones that we used to whoop up off our feet you give them that mama look like yep. yeah that's what it make me think about it makes me think about, don't get me wrong, if you was raised with your mama and your daddy, they did the best they can, you know, you, you seen your daddy as a provider, you seen your mama as a nurturer, and whatever the case may be, I'm not knocking you. Some of you may say, I was a spoiled brat, I didn't want for anything, but then you expect your spouse to be the same way. You expect your spouse to spoil you the way that your daddy did. Uh, 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 wives, uh, 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 husbands, you expect your wife to spoil you and mother you, hello, who am I talking to, somebody, spoil you and mother you the way your mama did. Baby, you didn't marry your mama, your daddy. How many times have I had to say this? <laughs> so we need to get to the point where we have to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, am I mature in this marriage? Because only kids play games. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, we might be adults. You know, we play a little spades and everything, little dominoes every now and then. I'm not talking about that. You know, them grown folks games right there. Them grown folks, you tell the kids to get out of the room. You know, you about to break the table. Them grown folks games. Hey, Miss Delia, what I'm saying is stop playing games with your marriage. 
Stop playing games with, with God's word. Stop playing games with the scriptures. I've seen my fellow folks, you sitting up in church and you, you doing all this mess. You talking about this, that, and the other, but you not applying scriptures to your own marriage. So we need to get to the point, and I'm tired of this, where you got people who are chicken, uh, cherry picking the scriptures for their own benefit. Uh, uh, husbands, let me holler at you. Let me talk to you. You'll sit up here and you'll say, well, as a wife, you're supposed to submit to me. Well, husband, and what you supposed to be doing if, if you if you can pick up that bible long enough and dust it off or you can scroll through your bible app and you can throw scripture at your wife and say she's supposed to be submitting to you number one ask yourself are you giving her something to submit to that's number one number two i'm gonna ask this question what are you doing as a husband because if you was loving your wife the way that christ loved church and you were sitting for playing games with her feelings and emotions then your marriage wouldn't be where it is right now we need grown men to be grown men. That's what we need you to do. We need you. If, if you got down on your crusty knee, even if you didn't get down on your crusty knee, you ask this woman to marry you, then that means you are man enough to carry out what the word of God says need to be carried out in regards to your marriage. If if you wives have accepted, let me, let me holler at you. Let me talk to you. If you've accepted the marriage proposal or whatever the case may be, then that means submission should be somewhere up in there. I know, ladies, I hear you. You saying, but Shane, you don't understand. I married this joker and he ain't giving me nothing to submit to. Well, that's a conversation that need to be had. It need to be had and, and a change needs to come about. But sitting up here playing games, it irritates me because what I think about when husbands and wives play games, when it comes to their marriages, that you're mocking God. That's what you're doing because God created the unity and the sanctity of marriage. So you're making fun of God with your marriage because your marriage is not being an example for others to see. And this is the last thing that irritates my soul. I can't stand why it is that we as individuals can't share and celebrate those who, hey, Tiffany, share and celebrate those who are actually, we all got things in our marriage that we go through. We all got arguments. I ain't even going to set a prayer in line and say marriage is perfect because it's not. You see what I'm saying? But what bothers me is when we can't help congratulate. Now, if somebody going through in their marriage, baby, they going through. Listen to what I'm saying. They about to get a divorce, baby. Be, we so quick to share that and put that out there, but we can't even take a minute to congratulate those who are making it through. I know a, a whole lot of times, and I can name the folks on her, and I ain't even trying to be mad. You know, I'm just keeping it real. A whole lot of times we post like the marriage couple of the week. Why can't people go and congratulate the people that are actually doing things? They acting like whole grown adults. You see what I'm saying? But let it be some bad news, baby. You quit to share that. You quit to share that. You quit to put the little uh, sad emoji and all that kind of stuff like that. See, this is whole grown people that ain't playing with that marriage because they mature in their marriage and they want their marriage to prosper and they ain't been in this thing in longevity. But let it be something tacky. Let it be where, oh, so-and-so, let a wife, listen to this, let a wife, God forbid a post how her husband is beating her. She got all these bruises and stuff on his face. You got something to say about that and you sharing the negativity. So why can't we share and like and all that stuff when it comes to people who are acting mature in their marriage and they trying to make this thing work? We don't never want to share the good stuff, but we always want to be the first one to tell it when it comes to the negative stuff. Why? I wonder sometime, hmm, as I think, does that mean because you replicating your own marriage? Does that mean because your marriage ain't working out, you can't be happy for somebody else? Does that mean you share the negative because you see the negative in your own life? I'm just saying, I ain't trying to call nobody out. I'm just putting it out there. We need to get to the point where we stop playing games with this marriage. And see, this is the thing. Like, I see God. I see God. Where, where we sit up here and we're doing premarital counseling. I see it in the near future. I do. And, and you best believe if anybody ever sit before me, I'm going to ask the question. I'm going to ask the question. Are you ready for marriage? It makes me mad when I sit up here and ask people, are you ready for marriage? You ready to have sex? You ready to have that title? You ready to have that ring on your finger so you can say you missed it so-and-so and yeah, I missed her. And you ready to have that title of wife and you ready to have that title of husband? Well, why you ain't ready to put in the work? Why does it immediately go past the little honeymoon stage and then all of a sudden you making marriage look bad? If you not in marriage for the long run and I got so many people who say 
how they desire to be married. Baby, are you mature enough for the marriage? I don't give a John Brown what age you are. If you 18 or if you 75, are you mature enough for the marriage? Because one thing you got to understand about marriage is, marriage is, the marriage is not about you. It's about y'all. So let me, let me say that non-texting. Marriage is not about you. It's about us. My marriage is not about me. It's about me and my husband. If you're not ready for it, don't even go down that road. Don't even uh, uh, blast, blast God. Don't bring no blasphemy about it. None of that kind of stuff. Marriage is for people who are ready for it and definitely for people who are willing to put in the work. Not for people who play these childish, petty games. Oh, yeah, girl. Mm-hmm. If he really loved me, watch this, watch this. Only a kid do that. You don't play with nobody's hearts and their emotions if you're not willing to put in the work. Only a kid do that. They play games, you know what I'm saying, with people's emotions and all this other kind of stuff. And on the flip side, I'm going to ask you this. Don't get played, baby. Don't get played. Because what happens is people get sick and tired of being uh, playing games in their marriage and they throw up them deuces and they say that I'm out and I don't want to be in this no more. Because see, when they signed up for marriage and they said I do, they signed up for a whole relationship, a whole marriage where the two becomes one, Matthew 19 and 6, which is our radio show uh, scripture. The two become one and they put in that work to make each other happy because they realize that marriage is 100-100. It ain't 50-50, 70-30, 80-20. I don't care how you break down a hundred. It's not that you give a hundred and, and he give a hundred. That's what it is. So this is what marriage is about. So if you call yourself right now, be being engaged or you just long and desire to be married, I'm going to ask you, are you ready to be mature? Because it's time out for those games. You be the best wife that you can be. Husband, you be the best husband you can be. Y'all allow God to be the head of your marriage and also the foundation of your marriage and watch that thing work. Don't nobody have time for reindeer games when you're trying to grind and do and allow your marriage to be that example that God created for many to see. Okay? So y'all have a blessed day. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Sure, this because it's free. Be a blessing to somebody today not a curse. Your curse, she ain't gonna be back here on tomorrow. Whatever God placed in my heart in your mind, my mind. Guarantee you. See, I have a blessed day. Stay warm and blessings to you.